Yes. That he came and gave his life for mankind. Praise to the Alpha and Omega. Yes. Praise to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Praise to the eternal Word of God. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Bible tells us in the beginning, God created man and woman. Men and women choose to separate themselves from God. They sin against God. They sin against one another. Yet they sin against creation. They separated from God. Throughout centuries, God communicated with them. God gave them the message of salvation. Around 1st century BC, eternal word of God took up human form, came and dwelt among us. It was the eternal word of God. Fulfilled the prophecies which Bible mentions over centuries. He died on the cross for the sin of mankind. Through his death on the cross, man and woman can be can make right with God. Through his death, death and resurrection on the cross, we are made right with God. Without Lord Jesus Christ, we are all in a big mess and there is no solution for that. Christians, look at the blood of Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross, we repent from the sins we did against God and against one another. Come to Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Yes. Yes. Bible teaches it is the eternal word of God gives us eternal life. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bible tells us in the beginning, men and women, when they choose to separate themselves from God, God gave them lots of laws and regulations which they needed to follow. Yet it is the same Bible we are told we need a circumcised heart. Only way we can recognize God. Our heart needs to be circumcised. Yet in Old Testament law, we see men needed to be circumcised as well. With the blood of Jesus Christ, we have renewed, circumcised heart. Yet we were disturbed by reading the articles this week. In the world, there are men and women who have been circumcised physically from their private parts. We look at the article which came up this week. That's right. Should we, should we read it? Okay, so we're looking at what is is generally classified as FGM, which is the, um, female genital mutilation. I'm sure you're all familiar with this term, and it's world, world, worldwide it's spread, it's spread, particularly amongst in Africa, <coughs> um, Northern Africa, East Africa, West Africa, in Yemen, Iraq, and we're hearing of these young, young children, probably at age of six years old um, and older, and basically what's happening is that they're, being, they're experiencing what they call female circumcision. Now, what the Muslims will tell us is that we're hold on. Circumcision was taught in the Bible or was taught in the scriptures um, before, um, beforehand. But when we look at where this all originated from, we find that God never spoke about females being circumcised. What God did give to Abraham in the book of Genesis 17, he speaks about um, circumcision to males as a sign of the covenant between him and his people. And when we go into the New Testament, he speaks about a Jew is one who circumcised of the heart, meaning one who separated unto him as his people. Now what the Muslims have done, they've completely trashed that and they've reinvented something called female circumcision, which brings so much torment and chaos um, and trauma to, a young, to young women all over the world. Now we're going to look at what the um, uh, Clarion. what Clarion, the Clarion Project article speak, says about this. I'm going to read this. It's published excerpt. on Tuesday. So, published on the 21st of May. And here's what it says. I'm just going to read a short, 
Um, short part of it. Okay, it says in the speaking about um, a, a, a documentary called The Honor Diaries. It says FGM tells of a physical and emotional pain that remains long after the, the abuse. So when a woman circumcised, it speaks about this pain and uh, long after. Okay. Then it says sexual intercourse and childbirth become horribly painful and traumatic uh, traumatic experience. Women may have chronic um, ur urinary tract infections and are often plagued with depression and other invisible scars. The World Health Organization estimates at least 200 million women today live with the consequence of FGM. In the United States, 507,000 women are at risk of have or have undergone the procedure in the US. And so it goes on and on and it speaks about the trauma caused to a woman during childbirth, um, during sexual intercourse, when she's um, urinating because of this damage that's done to her, um, to her private parts. And that's what we want to speak about. Where does this come from? Because it certainly doesn't come from the Bible. I want to know where the Muslims get this information from. So we are talking about approximate 200 million women yeah. affected by FGM. Yeah. That's a lot of number. But it's not because of the numbers, but intentions behind FGM is that women won't feel pleasure from the sexual relationship. That is already ugly. It is ugly. Bible teaches us sex is a gift from God between one man, one woman, husband and wife in a bedding, um, in, in a, a wedding bed. Yet, Islam steps in and an intention of women to not have a pleasure from the sex, they circumcise the girls. 200 million girls. That's a lot of, a lot of number. Here are the some countries which has been affected by FGM. Senegal. Do you want to hold it, brother? Sure, sure. So we've got Senegal, we've got Ghana, we've got Uganda, we've got, we've got lots of, lots of countries. Look at those countries. And remember 200 million girls in 21st century affected by FGM. Age from one. And intention is that women would not have a pleasure from that sex. Yet, you look at the Bible. Bible doesn't talk about the circumcision of the girls, but it talks about the covenant for the circumcision of men. Here is another graph for everyone to see. Those graphs can become from the um, UNICEF's website. So again, Benin, Ghana, Niger, Iraq, Cameroon, Uganda, Kenya, to Mali. This goes on and goes on. It affects women's life. Millions of girls get die after the circumcision. If you see it, after, the, after when you cut the girl's private part, there is a lot of bleeding. You die. If you survive, you have lots of miscarriage. And if you survive from those miscarriages, then when you give birth, your child might die or you die. Because it is awful and awful. And it is there with the awful intentions. Here's another graph which gives us the numbers of people who has been affected in these countries. Graph after graph, yet there is a face behind those numbers. There is a face behind those numbers. As we look at, let me show you the graphs again. Brother, hold this. Those are the some pictures behind those graphs. You can get those pictures from UNICEF's website. Brother, hold it. And as the art
articles came out this week, no one is saying what is the source of FGM? Where does it come from? Bible doesn't talk about FGM, but in somehow in countries those are being practiced. So what is the source of it? Muslims in somehow at Speaker's Corner don't want to take responsibility and address the issues. But when we look at the Islamic sources, we see something very uncomfortable when it comes to FGM. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So when we look into the problem we have here, Muslims will say to us, no, it's nothing to do with Islam, it's cultural, it's just done in certain nations. But the problem we have here is that we have to look at where did they get this idea from? And so we need to go into their sources, which is the Sunnah. Well, Sunnah meaning the ways of their Prophet. How did Muhammad conduct himself? What he did, because Muhammad, according to the Quran, is this perfect role model for all of mankind. And so we have to look at what he said, what was written about him. And so we go into the Hadiths, we go into some of the works um, done by his um, followers, and so on and so forth. And so let's look at what the, what the, it actually states. And I'm going to read from you, first of all. Can we first start with the Sharia law? Sharia. What is the Sharia law? say to us today about the circumcision of women. We are not talking about the circumcision of men. We want to talk and focus on the circumcision of women. So what is the Sharia guideline book tells us, brother? Right. Relevance from the, from the, from the hadith first. No, that's the relevance of the... Relevance, relevance of the traveler. Okay, we'll answer the Okay, yeah. let me read it. Page okay. 59. So, um, we'll answer the chapter, page 59. It says, circumcision is obligatory for both men and women. For men, it consists of removing the prepuce from the penis, and women, removing the prepuce of the clitoris. Not the clitoris itself, um, as some mistakenly assert. And then it says that the Hanbalis yep. hold the circumcision of women is not obligatory, but, but sunnah. While Hanafis consider it a mere courtesy to be the, courtesy to the husband. So Sharia law, Sharia law simply tells us it is obligatory that woman and man must be circumcised. Yes. The Sharia law where Muslim wants to bring to the London. Right. Sharia law which has been practiced in some Muslim countries tells us it is obligatory for girls to be circumcised. And let's see what is the Hadith tells us. So that is the Sharia, but what is the what is the Hadith tells us? So let's look at that. Sunan Abu Dawood, 5251. It says, a woman used to perform circumcision in Medina. The Prophet said to her, do not cut severely, as that is as that is better for a woman and more desirable for a man. So think about what this hadith is saying. Muhammad comes along and he's saying, listen, when you carry out circumcision, you mustn't cut severely. No, because it'll be better for a woman. However, it will be desirable for the man. So really the emphasis and the focus is on the man's satisfaction. So as the man husband. during sex, the, so husband, husband. Yeah, the husband during sex can have pleasure. And it's more about him rather than the horror and the trauma that a woman has to experience by literally having her private parts mutilated, chopped up, the pain and not only the physical pain but the mental and the psychological pain that happens years after. The, 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 the emphasis is on the man's pleasure. That's what they want to introduce into this country. Sharia law where when you become a Muslim you must abide under this tradition of Female, mutual, um, f female genital mutilation. This is what they want to teach to us. So we saw Sharia teaches woman circumcision is all right. We saw Hadith tells 
us one more circumcision is all right but don't take the whole vagina out leave it some some place because it is more desirable for husband sorry for the language but it is how islam is speaking about it let's see let's see do we have any other references from islam so sahih Mis sahih muslim tells us messenger of allah said when anyone said at least of four parts of woman and circumcised parts touch each other but becomes obligatory when man and woman getting in close to the sexual relationship when they are circumcised parts men circumcised part and woman's circumcised parts meet then you need to clean yourself up through bath which is called called ghusl so there is a great opportunity for muhammad who is supposed to be the example to mankind to say that is very ugly that you chop off the vagina of girl but muhammad tells oh guidelines is when you touch one another please wash yourself through bath i know and that's um and this is the reality of what we have with islam you know they see purity as cutting um a physical part of your body when well, we know that you could do everything to your physical body but if your heart is dark or blackened or if you're in sin this doesn't show up externally it's a spiritual issue and what they fail to do is address the spiritual aspect instead they focus on the physical which shows you that they they strain away from God's original teaching which is circumcision is of the heart and it's the heart that needs to be purified towards God not your physical body we can read the similar hadith from Tirmidhi and from the Muslim five acts of the fitna one of them is the circumcision for man and for woman which is very very ugly when we look at so you can read it from the sahih muslim ibn tirmidhi and then this goes on and on but here is the most disturbing thing in 21st century people decided to ask this to muslim scholars what is it is it obligate it is it acceptable i can't pronounce that word obligatory for women to be circumcised or not islam qa tells us circumcision of women and men and women is obligatory in islam there is no any muslim scholar according to islam qa they disagree about it so simply simply sahih bukhari sahih muslim and other islamic traditions plus sharia law tells us circumcision of women must take place but here is the problem here is the problem in 21st century and i don't think it was even all right any of the century that is acceptable intention of cutting woman's vagina because you don't want her the pleasure in sex that is very very ugly it is violent against woman it is violent against another human beings and there is no place for that in britain there is no place for that in any continent yet today 2000 million girls are dealing 200000 just 200 million 200 million girls are dealing with the consequences of female circumcision it is ugly it is unacceptable
and you have to understand one thing, you have to think about it this way. Imagine this is someone you know. Imagine your sister or your mother, because you have to understand a lot of becoming a having to have this procedure done to you isn't something that you choose. For example, some people here may choose to become a doctor. Some people may choose to become um, a Muslim. Some people may choose to become a Christian. Or regardless, you have a free choice. Here, this is enforced upon you, and we have, and this is a, a, a reality, it's a fact, in countries driven by the Sharia law, it is obligatory, it's, uh, it's unacceptable for you not to have this procedure done to you that's going to damage you physically, mentally, and you know, for many people, they're going to pass away, they're going to die. And so you have to understand, if you want to bring it to home, think about if the UK became a nation which was governed by Sharia law, you'd now be forced to have females, you know, be circumcised. No, just one. Yes. No, you can't do that if you are converted, but if you're born as a Muslim, then it needs to be done. Yeah, if you yeah, convert, sorry. yeah, that's right. So, so? If you become a Muslim, I can do it for my daughter or not. I this is my choice. Not I must do that because the Quran forces Jewish. This is lie. You are putting lie on Quran. You put lie on Islam. So why you use What did we say? Tell me, tell me why you Islam doesn't give you the option. Islam tells you this is the obligatory. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not listening. You do not have the option. It is obligatory. What part of that don't you understand? Your purpose from all this to guide me to worship your Jesus. Should we read this again? Which he was eating and drinking, and after that he was going behind the tree for pooping and. Listen. They know, they know the line. They know. I know, I know. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. We heard you. Islamic Dawah team. Islamic Dawah team thinks we are lying. It is. The Sharia guideline tells us this is how it is. It is Sahih Muslim. It is Sahih Bukhari. It is Dawood, which are the Islamic tradition. Do not cut 
said severally is that it. is better for for woman and more desirable for her husband. Okay, I'm having a discussion or shall I walk in? I am answering your question. No, I am answering your question. Just be patient. You, you be patient. You, you didn't even listen. Hatun. You I'm not even trying to listen. Ask for a definition in the English you language of you don't female listen, are you? genital mutilation. You cannot give me one. Because I'm going to give you once one. Once you define it, you cannot prove it. From Let's okay. see. He yes. doesn't want to listen. Circumcision yeah. is so obligated. Okay, can you? For both you man and woman. Away. I walk away. For woman, it consists of removing for removing the prepuce from the now? penis. He, he and for woman, removing the prepuce no, no. I'll, I'll give and bars of the colon. He won't listen, he's just here to make noise. You're not read it one more time. Read it one more time, please. Adnan, just listen. I just gave you the wait, definition, wait. Adnan. All of these good people. What is that, Bazaar? Intelligent discussion, right or wrong? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then listen to the answer. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, to the answer. No, no, listen to the answer. You asked listen. the question. You don't listen. That's all right. Don't then listen, don't make me disagree. I will listen to your answer. Let me finish what the point is. These guys, they claim that female genital mutilation is part of Islam. Yes, it is Islamic. Okay, okay, okay we heard that. We heard that. Okay, we don't heard that. Show. You got the now we are asking them to define what is female genital mutilation. They cannot give me a definition. I dare them both to give me a definition of it. Go on. What? Okay. For a woman, removing her, you need to have me to listen, pronounce this for that man. What is this you word, Adnan? That's an Islamic, that's an Adnan, Islamic website. Adnan, read the verse for me. Read, read, Adnan, read the verse for me. Ladies Adnan, brother, read the verse. brother, you pronounce it. I, I, I know, I read, I read. A definition so let's, is not in Bukhari, let's, but it's not in our sources. A definition means when you make a oh, Okay. That is the heartbreaking part. The lies and the deceptions from the Islamic that was seen. I'll get it out. I'll get it Let for you. Let me read it again. I'll get Go it for you. If you I'll get circumcision. It is obligatory for both men and women. For men, it consists of removing the prepuce from the penis, and for women, removing the prepuce of the clitoris. Not the clitoris itself, as some mistakenly assert. And then it goes on to say, the ha Hanbalis. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's so the definition that's right there. Billions of the Trevor's and that's from page Syria. 59. Four, can you read three, the definition? Four, three. I'm going to give you so, a definition. From a medical side, I'm going to give a definition. He's not interested in the answer. They will not read it. You Let's know keep why? I'll tell you why. Because okay. they know they're a bunch of liars. They know. No. They will not no. read it. No. No. You said you can enforce you, and you are a liar. Okay. So, he's deceiving once again. Okay. Female genital mutilation, yes. cutting, refers to all prejudices involving partial or total removal of the female external genital or other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. UNICEF page page, UNICEF page page, which also confirmed by the Sharia law guidelines, page 59. Right. Here's the bottom line. Yes. It is ugly. It is not acceptable. It has no place in this world, Adnan. You need to wake up. You need to deal with the Islamic traditions, which tells us women should be circumcised. Intentions are wrong. It goes against the book of the people of the book, which Quran came to confirm. It goes against the teaching of the Bible. It has no place. Yes, yes, yes. I read it again. I read it again. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I'm going to read it again. Listen. Just give us. You don't know what definition is. I'm going to read it again because I'm not. Listen. In case there's something. Where did you repeat it? Anyone here? Let's read it again. Yes. Yes. I read it. Yes. Yes. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Yes. 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 Yes.
That's a question. Know, I'm, not a doctor. I'm asking doctor. you laughing at it. You was mocking it as it was a joke. Because I can't understand what she's saying. No, you was mocking and laughing no, honestly, because... No. Okay, so I you can't. Why would I? So is there any serious Muslims around? Are you a Muslim? Yes, I am. Okay, so is it okay for a woman to have no. her genitals mutilated? No! It's not okay. But you do understand that we've read you several sources, Islamic sources, that affirm that this is... Every woman that I know that is Muslim has not... Can you just show me what you... But I'm not, listen, I'm not asking about the statistics of women you know. I'm asking about the Sharia law, I'm asking about your hadith, and I'm asking about the Sunnah. Okay? It doesn't exist. But you, we just read it to you. We just read it to you. Okay. So, so would you say you're someone who follows the Sunnah or yeah. your Hadith? God okay. Win. God win. Can I read you what the Hadith says? Godwin. Godwin. All right. Let me read that it. That tradition is an African wait, tradition. Wait, wait, and, you know wait, wait, wait. and you know it. Exactly. And you know it. It's, 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 you know it. If you went to Africa, you were doing that already. Okay. With Christianity went so, you know it. Sunan Abu Dawood. Listen. It says a woman. You know the Sunan Abu Dawood? Jasmine Tucci. Where is the eyes? Abu Dawood. Abu Dawood. 41. 5,251. It says, from where? Narrated. Abu Dawood, sir. Don't you even know what is Abu Dawood? Don't worry, I'll read it anyway. Ayat al Nasir. A woman used to perform circumcision in Medina. The Prophet Muhammad said to her, Do not cut severely. We can't allow liars. As this is better for a woman. But instead, the woman are more desirable for a husband. Did you actually hear the words I said? Or were you too busy saying you're a liar? So, here's the summary. Here's the summary. Muslims might tell us we are a liar. They must deal with their sources. It is Islamic tradition. It is Sharia law tells us this is Islamic. But as we've been telling, even if it is Islamic, there is no place for female circumcision in this world. Therefore, once again, Islam and Muhammad has no place in this world. Bible teaches importance of the circumcision of the hearts because of the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Even though you chop off the vagina of woman, still it's not gonna affect anything. It's not gonna help with your eternity. It's just going to put those girls more in danger in danger and in danger. It is just wrong. As Bible tells us, as Bible tells us, circumcision of heart is important. Bible tells us, how do we get the circumcised heart? Right, so when you have your heart circumcised, it's relating to the set of heart as God's people. It's a sign that you are now um, reunited or reconciled to Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel. The gospel is that you also can have your heart circumcised. And you can be purified and clean, not physically, not externally, not outwardly. But if your heart is pure before God, God, my friend, you can receive salvation, and that's only through the blood of Jesus Christ, and it's only through His sacrificial death that atoned for your sin. My friend, you can do all the physical stuff you can do. You can pray uh, five times a day. You can do fasting of Ramadan as long as you want. You can do all the external, outward, um, you know, declarations that you're a good Muslim. However, if your heart is not circumcised, if your sins are not washed away by the blood of Jesus, my friend, you are condemned, you are damned. There's only one way to Jesus, and that's through, only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.